Welcome to yet another episode of the Comic Book Movie Bracket here on Movie Feuds. This has already taken me an eternity to get through and I have a long way to go still, so pack a lunch. Today's topic is a good one. It's the Christopher Nolan Dark Knight Trilogy. Let's begin. Love him or hate him, Christian Bale is the Batman slash Bruce Wayne combo for these three pictures. I think he does get better as these films progress, but DC's villains are really the highlight for me. Liam Neeson as Ra's al Ghul, Heath Ledger as the Joker, and Tom Hardy as Bane all put in the work. Ledger and Hardy really stand out and are some of my favorite villains in comic book history. Supporting cast is impressive. There's a lot of award winners here. Michael Caine and Morgan Freeman bring a certain level of uh, class to the picture. This is class. I would be remiss if I didn't acknowledge the actress change from my Dawson's Creek bride, Katie Holmes, to Maggie Gyllenhaal. It just always takes me a bit out of the movie when this happens. I have very little else to say about the cast since I've talked about Batman about 50 times now on this channel. As we all know, Batman is a dark and disturbing tale. One where a woman falls in love with a bat. After a night of wild, passionate lovemaking, this deformed creature is birthed. A half-man, half-bat rises from the depths of a sex cave to fight crime. He befriends an equally deformed cat woman, and he goes under the guise of a billionaire playboy. It's a true coming-of-age story. Yes, I know that's not the plot, but as previously stated, I've done a lot of these episodes now. I'm trying to keep it fresh. Batman Begins starts this saga with a rowdy Bruce Wayne finding his way in this topsy-turvy world after his parents' lives are taken in front of him. He learns to fight the same way all people should, at the hands of Liam Neeson. I actually hope to die by Liam Neeson's hands someday as well, it's on my bucket list. The Batman is born just in time to battle Gotham's first big threat, the Scarecrow. It's a very fine setup to the new franchise and a welcome one after the abortion Batman and Robin was years earlier. I'll be covering that later in the comic book bracket since this thing is never ending. The Dark Knight really ups the ante in all aspects. The cinematography, the characters, the action, it's all so much better. The Joker is a crafty and deranged character study introduced in a fantastic way. Every moment Ledger is on screen is magic. I think the film does run a bit long and the boat scene could have been axed altogether, but more time with this Joker is alright since we're never going to see him again. Two-Face is kind of present, a disappointment that he was built up in such a great fashion but then disposed of before he really got a chance to shine as a villain. The Dark Knight Rises ties this whole thing up in a very nice bow, with Batman retiring, leaving the rest of Gotham's citizens to slowly die of radiation poisoning. It's perfect. There are a lot of plot holes and stupid moments in the third outing, yet I can overlook them due to the awesome performances and terrific action. By far the best fights in the trilogy. Anne Hathaway looks great in that leather outfit too, and I really need to give her props on how absurdly she mounts that bat cycle. Everyone knows you ass pop first, slow roll to breast touch, and then go up to the vag slide. This is a professional movie review channel. Subscribe. In an era overblown with spectacle, it's always nice to return to the Nolan films that typically stay as grounded as possible. Even when he's launching a man into space or bending buildings, there's a level of practicality to it all. It feels real. These are character-driven flicks that don't require explosions at every turn, but when they do crop up, they are glorious. Semis flipping, plane jacking mid-flight, grand IMAX shots above skyscrapers. There are some intense hand-to-hand -hand fights, especially in Rises. And I really dig the blue hues Nolan went with two and three. I felt the orange was a little too much for me in terms of tone. Hans Zimmer scored all three films with a theme that's appropriately dark and equally epic. The soundtrack isn't near as memorable as the work done on the Tim Burton movies, although they played their part well. And that slow, loud rumbling sound would go on to be featured in every movie trailer since 2011 and on. It's annoying. While not the perfect trilogy in my opinion, that belongs to Lord of the Rings, this is still one of the best comic book ones. A memorable cast, consistent themes, and a nice balance of action and drama make the Dark Knight trilogy one to own. I really have a tough time picking a winner here. I think the Dark Knight is the best overall film, but I think Dark Knight Rises is the best comic book film, if that makes sense. These movies really raise the bar for the audience on just how serious and impressive these types of films can be. Comment, vote for the winner, and remember this is more than just reviews, this is Movie Feuds. Tune in next time, sports fans. The Joel Schumacher Batman movies along with Suicide Squad go head to head. It's gonna be a shit show.